This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Thursday, the 22nd day of July in the year 2021. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Let's tell you now that again, a teacher's union is not taking kindly to recent statements by the Minister of Education, Priya Manik Chand, who accused the union of behaving like a political entity because of its protest outside her office. She said the union will be treated as a political entity if that's how it wants to behave. GTU President Mark Light has described the statements by Manik Chand as a threat. In a Facebook post, Mr. Light wants to know how the union could be labeled as a political entity while it is representing the rights of workers. The GTU president also said the union does not take the minister's statements lightly and intends to respond appropriately to prove the reason behind the protest. He said teachers should be assured that their union will not be intimidated. GTU General Secretary Coretta MacDonald, who was also an opposition member of parliament, said she wants to know why teachers and their union are being targeted and labeled when the same was not done when other unions and workers came out in protest recently. It, it is not strange that trade unions um, protest for, for better salaries and better wages and better living conditions. It's, it's nothing strange. As a matter of fact, um, they, that was why trade unions were, were birthed, so that they can represent workers who couldn't speak for themselves who couldn't bargain for better wages and salaries. So what you saw there today is nothing strange. As a matter of fact, let me bring it home. In 2018, we had this. Just the other day, we saw the GPL workers out protesting. They got raised in salary. We saw Gaisuko workers coming out protesting. They got raised in salary. So with teachers being out there, I don't know why this big alarm and why all of this sweating by, by Auntie Priya. I, I don't understand. The Canada Teachers Union has accused the Education Ministry of sidelining the union and going directly to talk to teachers on national issues and union matters. The Education Minister has denied any sidelining of the union, pointing out that since she has been in office, she has had six meetings with the union in the past nine months. More news coming up in just a moment. What's our purpose? Together we rise. For our community, our customer, and our country. Our promises. Strengthen our community. Reliably connect our customers. Innovate for all in our country. Together, we rise. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Mobile One is more than oil, it's many oils. It transforms at the molecular level. When cold, it's thicker than honey. When hot, it's thinner than water. Mobile One adapts and readapts to last longer. 16,000 kilometers between oil changes. That's your engine evolved. Saul Gann is the authorized distributor of mobile lubricants. Let 
GBTI make your dreams of owning a home a reality. Buy or build your home with us. Let us help you to completely outfit your home and make it move in ready. Need to purchase land? We finance that too. Benefit from our 10% down payment and interest rates as low as 4.25%. Calculated on the reducing balance with up to 30 years to repay. Switch your mortgage to us and learn about benefiting from the equity in your home. Invest wisely. Apply online or call your branch to schedule an appointment. GBTI, we see Guyana through your eyes. President Irfan Ali has announced that the Ghana Defense Force will be playing a more critical role, an integral role, in the development of a national disaster plan to help protect Guyanese and the country's resources from the effects of climate change, in addition to its role of securing the country's integrity and maintaining stability. During his address to the graduates of the GDF Standard Officers Course No. 52, the President noted the different roles being played by members of the military as the country deals with the impact of climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic. These two threats, which you would have guessed by now, are the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic and climate change. No different from wars and large-scale conflicts. They have the potential to inflict mass casualties and massive destruction to the point of destabilizing our economy and threatening human existence. As I speak to you now, floods have resulted in more than 178 deaths in Western Europe, particularly in Belgium and Germany. Natural disasters and pandemics threaten the safety and well-being of our population and does so on a mass scale. As such, these threats qualify to be the subject matter of civil defense. The president said the new task that will be given to the GDF will not diminish or detract attention from its primary mission of protecting the country's territorial integrity and defending the national sovereignty. These efforts will not diminish or detract from the Guyana Defense Force mission of protecting the country's territorial integrity and defending national sovereignty. The President also referenced his address at this year's annual GDF Officers Conference, where he highlighted that a national defense policy will see greater involvement of the Guyana Defense Force in search and rescue operations, disaster response, provision of infrastructural services in the defense and protection of border communities, and in medical outreaches in response to medical emergencies, and in coaching and honoring talents of the athletes across the country. As I announced at the annual GDF Officers Conference, Guyana's National Defense Policy will see greater involvement of the Defense Force in search and rescue operations, in disaster response, in the provision of infrastructural services, in the defense and protection of border communities, in medical outreaches, in response to medical emergencies, and in coaching the talents of our athletes. The national events policy will afford greater visibility to and attract higher levels of respect for the members of the Guyana Defense Force. The President also referenced his address to this year's annual GDF Officers Conference, where he highlighted that a national defense policy will see greater involvement of the Guyana Defense Force in search and rescue operations and disaster response. The Ministry of Health has once again found itself in the spot of running out of second-dose shots of the Sputnik coronavirus vaccine. The recent shipment of second-dose shots was a small quantity. Only 5,000 shots arrived in the country and were administered within days across the country. Some regions complained about the small number of doses that were dispatched to them, although they have a much larger number of persons awaiting that second dose. Only 500 of the second dose shots were dispatched to Burbese, while other communities and regions got between 100 and 500 shots each. The situation remains worrying for many persons who were administered the first dose and are currently waiting on their second dose.
When the 5,000 doses arrived recently, the ministry announced that only those persons who were administered the first dose in April should come forward for the second dose. But even with that requirement, the doses ran out before all of those administered that first dose in April could have gotten their second dose. The Minister of Health has since indicated that another batch of the second dose shots is expected sooner. With Sputnik uh, V, we have first dose Sputnik V that is available and uh, we are working to make sure that the second dose would be available again uh, quite uh, soon. The manufacturer of the vaccine has found itself running short of second doses, forcing some countries to put a hold on their order until there is an equal number of second dose shots to match the first dose shots. Additionally, all of the countries that use the same middleman from the United Arab Emirates have complained about the slow delivery of supplies, although they found themselves paying double the price for the vaccines. Guyana is among the countries that bought the vaccines through the same middleman. The chairman of Region 10, Deron Adams, recently launched his Regional Economic Advancement Partnership, REAP, in the Upper Demerara Burbis region. The REAP project seeks to empower women across the Region 10 area through supporting their efforts to become independent by teaching entrepreneurial and life skills. The initiative officially got on the way recently with the start of an internship for women interested in learning dressmaking. The regional chairman said he's also pushing to reactivate microloans through the Linden Enterprise Network for persons interested in doing business. That program will also seek similar opportunities to empower men and women and youths to move their efforts into areas that could provide a sustainable income through training for involvement in microenterprises with the support of the private sector and individual partnerships, the regional chairman said. Well, the Regional Economic Advancement Partnership um will seek many similar opportunities garden to empower both our men and women um, it will include also youths um, and the attempt is one which is to move their efforts into areas that could provide a sustainable income through training and also for their involvement in micro enterprises of course with the support of the private sector and individual partnership like this one um, that we would have launched with. Mr. Adams also said the program will also be utilizing the time of skilled personnel and seniors to donate their expertise to the training efforts as he and his team pool their efforts to address unemployment, underemployment and poverty in the Region 10 communities. Let's tell you now that the Regional Executive Officer for Region 9, Carl Singh, remains in police custody over the shooting of a woman in his car. Singh is accused of shooting the woman to her abdomen around midnight on Tuesday in the Letham Business District. The woman has since been hospitalized in a serious condition. Details of the shooting incident are sketchy, but Singh's firearm has since been taken away from him while the probe is ongoing as he remains in custody. Investigators will attempt to interview the victim once she gets clearance from the doctors. The 33-year-old Aria was appointed to the post just after the change of government last year. Three men who have been accused of robbing a Rockstone businesswoman in Region 10 have been charged and remanded to jail. The three, Elijah Hollingsworth, Dane Johnson and Joel Morrison, appeared in court on Tuesday jointly charged with the armed robbery of Diana Ross. It is alleged that last Friday the three men pounced on the businesswoman at her grocery store and carted off several items and a quantity of cash. The three were reportedly in the woman's store earlier in the same day and returned the evening to carry out the robbery. One of them was recognized by the woman's grandson, allowing the police to easily identify him. The three will remain behind bars until the case comes up again for hearing in August. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Preparing for your NGSA exams is always a challenge. 
The Guyana Learning Channel is here to help. You can go to YouTube using your browser or your mobile device. Then search for the Guyana Learning Channel in the search bar. We're live streaming our NGSA booster videos all day and all night. If you want to study a specific subject or topic, you can go to our NGSA booster playlist. You can look at a specific subject, such as mathematics, and then look for a specific topic. Here, you can follow along with the lesson to prepare for your examination. Remember kids, study hard, and best of luck in your exams. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. What's our purpose? Together we rise. For our community, our customer, and our country. Our promises. Strengthen our community. Reliably connect our customers. Innovate for all in our country. Together we rise. Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance, and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. Fuel it up and drive! Wait, today what day, man? You know what, maybe I'm to go and get a vaccine sometime soon. Let me check this book. The book there, man. Oh. Shocks me, I almost forget the second dose. Me gonna forgot take me second dose of the vaccine. Me gonna forgot now. So, so doctor, the first vaccine, no me take in a bit hot, right? But me here say that them said the second one does hot. You go hot? No, the second vaccine shouldn't hurt either. Okay, ah, good. It is very important that all of us take our second dose. Why? Because with the first dose, usually the, the people who get protection, only 68% of them. If, you, if we all take the second dose, that number rises to about 95%. So it is very, very important that once you've taken the first dose, it's good to take the first dose, but then you must go on to take the second dose. Let us protect ourselves and protect the people around us, our loved ones, friends, and family. I'm Dr. William Ndukro, the past PAHO WHO representative and presently the project director for the Mental Health Suicide Study. Across the region tonight, with an uptick in the transmission of COVID-19 cases in Jamaica, the Prime Minister there, Andrew Holness, says it is likely that a tightening of measures will be announced next Tuesday to reverse the steady increase in persons contracting the virus in Jamaica. And as the government awaits the results of more recent tests done to determine whether the dreaded Delta variant has landed on Jamaica's shores, opposition spokesman on health Dr. Moriez Guy is of the view that a highly transmissible strain of COVID-19 is already in Jamaica. He's urged the government to speed up the acquisition of the genome sequencing machine that has the capacity to test for the various COVID-19 strains. Responding to the issue, the Prime Minister said that the acquisition of the sequencing machine was still at a procurement stage. However, he noted that the process was well advanced and the machine should arrive in Jamaica within the next couple of weeks. 
Unrest around the northern Haitian city of Cap Haitian yesterday as demonstrators set up roadblocks in protest against the assassination earlier this month of President Jovenel Moïse, whose body will be laid to rest there on Friday. National police chiefs arriving in the city to help oversee Moïse's funeral were met by protests from the slain president's supporters, who hold the police responsible for the killing at his residence on the 7th of July. Government officials say Moïse was murdered by a team of mostly Colombian mercenaries, but many questions remain unanswered, including why the president's security forces did not do more to protect him. At least one person lay dead in the streets of the city following the disturbances, which took place just as Moïse's widow, Martine, attended her first public event since returning from Miami at the weekend. And finally tonight, international news. China has rejected the next stage of a World Health Organization plan to investigate the origins of the coronavirus pandemic. The WHO wants to audit laboratories in the area that the virus was first identified. But the Deputy Health Minister in China said this showed disrespect for common sense and arrogance towards science. WHO experts said it was very unlikely that a virus escaped from a Chinese lab, but the theory has endured. Investigators were able to visit Wuhan, the city where the virus was first detected in December 2019, earlier this year. But earlier this month, the World Health Organization had outlined the terms of the inquiry's next phase, which included looking at certain science research institutions. He has now called on China to be more cooperative about the early stages of the outbreak. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.